For so many of us, the Judd family feels like our family. They've been so famous for so long, beloved by so many. Winona, as you'll hear her joke about, is wearing sequins during this afternoon's conversation I have with her. It's not just her signature style, but really a metaphor for her bold and sparkling spirit. But today, the tone is noticeably heavier. What's weighing on Winona, of course, is the passing of her mom, Naomi. Country music lost a legend. Winona also lost her singing partner. They became famous as a duo known as the Judds. You can't say the name Winona without thinking about Naomi. Naomi passed away in April of 2022. She was just one day shy of her induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame. An autopsy report stated she died by suicide. The last words Winona said to her mother, I love you. Love can build a between your heart and mine. That is a performance of Love Can Build a Bridge at the CMT Awards last year, the final time Winona and her mom sang together. As you can hear through their music, the bond between them was undeniable. I caught up with Winona here at 30 Rock after she performed her heart out on the plaza, a testament to Winona's devotion to her fans and also the remarkable role music plays in her healing. Her emotions are raw, her grief apparent, yet her courage to sit with me and share so much so candidly is so true to character, unafraid. One of my favorite new things about you is that you don't, you're, you're over shoes. You're over shoes. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Now, what is it about the f- why? My husband said, "Yeah, you're different when you wear high heels. Oh. And I want you to play the way you play when you're barefoot. Like, think about it. That's it's very like, profound. It's like wearing makeup. You act different when you wear makeup. It was something to think about and I did it and I'm glad because I sing differently and I play differently when I don't have shoes on. I feel like there are times in our lives where we're just like, it's enough already. Mm-hmm. It's enough baggage we're carrying. Yep. It's enough pain we're lugging around. I agree. And I think for you, one of the things that you have been talking about is forgiveness. Who do you need to forgive to feel mm. lighter and better? Gosh. I'd say there are so many people on our list by the time you're 58. Like my sister and I are working on our stuff. Gosh, ex-husbands, my mom. I have a lot of forgiveness because I'm one of those kids that grew up. Everything is okay. Everything is okay. No, it wasn't okay that your mom didn't tell you the truth about your real father. It's not okay. But then you learn to forgive kind of thing. I know that's a lot. I feel like forgiveness is like an it takes you do it every day yes it's not like oh and they're forgiven now let me move on to somebody else Mm -hmm. um and is that how you've been dealing with it is it a process yeah totally you said something um well Mm -hmm. earlier today Mm -hmm. okay so the reason i talk about my mom so much is because i spent the majority of my life with her Mm -hmm. so something she said to me that helps me with forgiveness is Mm -hmm. if i had known better i would have done better if I'd have known better, I'd have done better. She did what she... I don't know what else to tell you. That's it. She did the best she could. She could. And it, sometimes it wasn't good enough. And I could forgive her because I know her heart. Those were not my intentions, she would say. Mm-hmm. And sometimes pain comes unintentionally. I mean, they don't mean it. They don't mean anything mm-hmm. by it. It's all mm-hmm. they knew, but we still receive it that totally. way. I was watching a clip of you and your mom singing that final time. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? Thought about what you saw, minus that very public moment where you sang together. What was that last day? Um, she was very fragile. She was. Yeah. And I think it's because she hadn't sung in a long time. Mm. And I think when our parents get older, their world gets smaller. Mm -hmm. Think about that. That's kind of heavy too. Mm -hmm. And 
she was late and she's never late and something with wardrobe and I think she was nervous and I think it was so much of an expectation to do it for CMT awards mm -hmm. and I just think it was like <gasps> imagine being that nervous you know and Had having you ever to go seen out. her that nervous before not really not the way she was nervous that mm -hmm. day I think as you see your parents getting mm -hmm. older and dealing yeah. with anxiety or for whatever reason if they get lost or you just, it's weird. Yeah. It's really strange. Did you try to comfort her or? It was snowing, yeah. raining. Yeah. It was 40 freaking degrees mm -mm. and I was barefoot and I was just freezing. <laughs> and it was one of those moments where you're, you know, the wind's in your mm -hmm. hair and you're like, oh. <laughs> and I think she was just overwhelmed. Oh. And I think that day was hard for me to see her that way. Yeah. Because I had not seen her that way very often. I'd seen her that way personally, but not professionally. Not professionally. Mm -hmm. Did you want to just, did you assume that this was one of those I days? wanted to pull her wig off. You did, what? <laughs> You're so bizarre. I wanted to pull her wig off. You she did? had this wig on yeah. that was like up to here. And I was like, I, I was so frustrated with her at one point. And aren't we all with our parents? Yes. At some point we want to go, knock it off. Stop. You know, yeah. and I did. I wanted, so when, when I, hear you start to say I think I know what you're where you're going yeah. and the first thought in my head was no I don't want to hug her or comfort her I want to pull her wig off because that was the dynamics of our relationship it was tough and tender mm. we're both so alpha and determined that it was sometimes hard for me to be tender with mom because I'm the lead singer mm -hmm. and I'm on my own you know version of life mm -hmm. on my own journey and I think it occurred to me that all of a sudden she looked at me and blinked and I knew then that something wasn't right in terms of her being off a little bit like mm -hmm. nervous and I I softened which mm. I think is God's grace mm. and I just kind of reached out and touched her hand like I'm here I got mm. you it's okay mm. I'm glad I did that because that was the last time we performed together mm. I'm glad I didn't stay stuck in my perfectionism is my point I guess we all worry about our moms passing away, but the idea that that's coupled with horrible traumas a lot for a, you're still a little girl inside, mm -hmm. little girl to carry. It's too much to process at times because I'm still, I'm not in denial. I guess where I'm at is, um, they, well, my grief counselor said there are six, uh, six stages of grieving yeah. out of five. And I'm like, what? Okay. And he said the sixth one is, wait for it, finding meaning. Oh. What? Finding meaning. What, in other words, there's meaning for me in my grieving mom. And the meaning mm -hmm. is somewhat forgiveness and somewhat give myself a freaking break mm -hmm. as a mother. Because <laughs> I don't. I'm really hard on myself as a mom. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to like forgive yourself for all this. I stuff. do. I'm the worst. I I judge everything, and I, you know, people think I'm so sassy. And yeah. when I say I'm introverted and shy, that's because I know how to work. I know my purpose professionally. Yeah, I didn't always know my purpose personally. Uh huh. Like I felt like such a misfit. I didn't fit in even in church. Really? Mm hmm. Not at all. Ashley was the popular one. I was the moody musician, you're lazy, no, I'm a dreamer. I mean, opposites, really, the mm -hmm. two of you. So how do you, because you were talking about your grief counselor told you about the six stages of grief, but how do you, how do you deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, the trauma that you had to go through? You go to work. Yeah, that's what you do. Well, I was going to ask you the same. I mean, what do you do when you're loss exceeds your mm. joy Oof. in your day. Oof. 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 Yeah. I don't know how to take time off. Not really because I'm such a doer and I like to fix things and I have, you know, 40 animals and I go feed and I go play. I do stuff. I'm not really good at sitting still. This whole Bible thing of, oh, be still and know that I'm God. No. Rock and roll. <laughs> Go hang out with Post Malone. I like to go and do things. And so I don't know how to be still, Hoda. I'm working on that, but it's not easy.
What kind of conversations have you had with God after your mom's passing? I had a lot of conversations with her. Did you? What'd yeah. You, what, about what? I'm like constantly talking to her about well, what the hell am I supposed to do about wardrobe? Because <laughs> she was always the wardrobe. Oh, she was the one who picked oh, the yeah, outfits. Oh, yeah, she's totally – well, she picked it first, then I had to try to match her. Uh-huh. Why do you think I wear black? Because <laughs> oh. everything I did was black <laughs> because she would wear gold lame. Uh-huh. For God's sake, who wears gold lame, you know? to church she does anyway i talked to her a lot about i don't understand i don't understand i don't understand i'm still struggling big time with why did you do this i don't i just think i'm such a help one person i want to help other people not do what my mother does i talked to her a lot about what am i supposed to do now what am i supposed to do now we were supposed to do a record together uh, we were supposed to do this tour together. I was mad for a long time because it was like this: the story can't end like this. This is no, this is not how the story is supposed to end. I don't. Uh. So that's been my exasperation: is how am I supposed to go on stage without you? So I walked around the house for a couple of days, going, "I can't do the tour. I just can't do the tour. You're gonna have to tell them I can't do it. It just doesn't make sense." Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that I changed my oh. mind. What changed your mind? What was it? I thought about the fans and the um, what I had learned from a major rock star. I won't mention names, but Bono says, <laughs> no, he said, give them what they want, not what you want. Wait, say that again? Give, give them, them the fans what, what they want, want. Not what you want. That's my job, is to provide America and abroad with words to help encourage or to help them grieve or whatever. So I don't know. I just, well, I do know. I said, tell me why I should do it. Hmm. And my husband gave me enough reasons, I guess. He really helped me because I was in a a bit of a, the glass is half empty. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. It's a lot to carry, man. You're, you're, <laughs> you are. And when I watch That's why you. I wear sparkles in the <laughs> afternoon. How did you get the greatest comfort? Was there something or someone who. My memo. In my life, you mean? Yeah. So that's where um, you got the most like comfort. What's mm-hmm. like like a warm hand on your heart? That's what it felt like. When I wrote the book, I did a whole chapter on food is comfort, comfort is food, because my grandmother cooked for me, and both grandmothers. One uh-huh. was a cook on a riverboat, so she really knew how. And she would sit, and it was the only time I ever had an adult that seemed to have a lot of time for me. Oh. Yeah. So that to me equates unconditional. She listened. She listened, and I just was enamored by that. And that's where you Because got... the parents were young, and they were working, and they were too young to have kids, really should have not had kids at that age. Yeah. And so they were always active and over, not fully present, let's yeah, put it Yeah, sure. Way. But you had that steady she hand. She was my comfort, and she would ask me to sing to her, which I just thought, she's the only person in the family that wanted to hear me sing. <gasps> the first one. Mm-hmm. I, she was the Mammal. first Wow. Yeah. What did you sing to her when you were a kid? I would sing whatever. I mean, when you're a kid, it was probably something that didn't rhyme or wasn't very good. <laughs> but in the end, she was my biggest fan, and I, she never got to see me perform on stage, oh. though, ironically. Really? And I sang at her funeral. Yeah. The women in my life that meant the most to me were listening. As you know, listening is the greatest gift you can give your kids. Right? Yeah. It oh. really is. It's the greatest thing ever. So Mamma was it. Something about that. It's like when you, because you feel seen. And you know what you do when you perform? People feel seen. Thank you for saying that, by the way. That's an affirmation. I think it's because, and I'm probably going to cry, I was so voiceless growing up in my family. And in our family, I learned uh, that we would rather be right than be loved. And so there wasn't a lot of communication. So I feel the way the fans do about feeling anonymous. Mm -hmm. And I look for the one that looks sad or, and I know that could could be really negative if you're not careful and it probably Mm -hmm. is not a great thing, but I'm looking at the woman who's maybe not as attractive. That's going to get overlooked. Mm -hmm. Who's just not as exciting or maybe doesn't have the right beautiful hair or maybe she's, not carrying herself very, you know, confidently. confidently. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think I feel these people and I, I feel like there's a part of me in them huh. that feels that I want to be loved. Maybe that's part of it. 
and because I know that because of them, I don't have to get a real job. <laughs> there is that piece where I swear to God, I was 18 years old. I would have been incarcerated or probably dead because I tried suicide at 18 and then got a record deal. So I went from zero to 60. Think about that for just a moment. I didn't have any idea of what's going on. So I think I feel those people, if that makes sense. Mm. At 18, what, what, what was happening I just that was, was so sort of, you know, thrown out of the house. And I went dark. And my stepdad tried to rescue me and said, you're going to college. And I became hopeless. And I just said, I can't. I can't imagine my life without music. Hmm. And I went there. And I'm still here, and it's a miracle. But I know this with all of my heart. I have such a passion for people who feel that anonymous. That's why I look at people in the uh-uh. airport. Or if I'm walking down a hotel hallway, I will say, hey, because people just are so Head good. Head down. At... Yeah. I feel it. What are you getting from your therapist and life coach? Because you're talking about how you're getting through these, these days. They tell me that I'm not completely out of my mind mm-hmm. for feeling the way I do at the time I feel it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it. D- David Kessler, he's mm-hmm. written you know, some books about it because he's that good. He said to me, you're right on time. I think he's the first person mm-hmm. that said to me, I wouldn't go telling everybody publicly Mm -hmm. what you're feeling, but it's okay here and you're safe. And I just felt safe Mm. in saying this stuff because I was mad. I was so mad at the time just because that's where I was. And he just basically said, it's okay. It's okay to be angry. It's okay. Because I think so many times we give our parents a pass because they're the parents and we're taught honor thy mother and thy father. Mm -hmm. And you honor what's honorable. You know, sometimes it's not okay. And I think he just basically said, there's no manual. There's no, just like having kids, there's no correct way to do this. Mm -hmm. Because I think we're on this schedule. Mm -hmm. We all do. Oh, it's been six months or it's been a year. You should be dating again. You know, you should be over this. Yeah, you should be past this. Bless your heart. Yeah. And I think it's just nice for somebody to say to me. I hear you and mm. I see you and you're not like get out of your head. You know, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Thank God for somebody that just says you're right on time. This is where you mm-hmm. should be. Trust the process. Oh, if I hear that one more time, <laughs> trust but they the... continue to say, trust the process. I actually have that on a painting in my bedroom. Do you really trust the process? I know. Whatever the process is. What is what the is process? I don't needs... understand. <laughs> Just trust the process. <laughs> what about the the faith piece of your life, which is, I think, a big, it's like a huge part of your life? Well, I will be honest with you and tell you that I haven't always been this faith. As a matter of fact, I tried it on my own. I really did. Like the whole I don't need you. I could do this myself. It didn't work out so good. Yeah. (laughs) It really sucked. And the faith piece for me is, God, it's so much better when you realize, oh, there's a higher power Mm -hmm. and I'm not it. Mm -hmm. Because I was raised to believe that I could, I mean, I, I made a joke one time in an interview that the Judd women are so confident, you know, you would almost expect us to be able to self-pollinate i mean honestly because we're so self-sufficient marching through the storm but i swear to you the older i get the more i need god because of just circumstance of Mm. just when you know my story with my daughter Mm. someday when we do our glory story Mm -hmm. people are going to go oh okay just like I talked to this young lady this afternoon briefly about her story, and I was like, how are you dressed and in public? What like, is she? What was her? She lost a brother to suicide, and oh. the story is horrendous. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, my God, what makes a person hang on? And yeah. what's the difference between yeah. someone who does and doesn't? And I'm learning so much right what, now. What is? I don't know the answer. Yeah. None of us do. Mm-hmm. I just know that the most important thing you can do ever is to reach out, Mm -hmm. even 
on a good day. You know how you have to take your kids to the pediatrician mm -hmm. when they're well mm -hmm. so they could see them well. Mm. So I call my life coach when I'm having a good day yeah. so I don't just bitch and complain about yeah. things. I think all of this is so fascinating what I'm learning right now. And the only thing I can say is finding meaning in all of this is if I can help one person out there not take their life, then mm. I've done my part. Um, I'm not responsible for, you know, the human race. I know yeah. sometimes mm. we get in trouble because we think we're supposed to carry everybody. Mm. I just want to help one person. And if that person can write to me and say, yeah, I decided not to, that would bless my heart big time mm. because we all matter. And I don't know why things happen the way they do. I just know that what I'm doing, like showing up this morning, I saw the rain and I was like, mm. oh, uh, I spent hours, <laughs> hello, on the hair, on the hair, and I saw those sweet people out in the front, and there was that woman standing off to the side that had made her own T-shirt, mm -hmm. and she was so proud, and she kept showing me, and I pointed to her, and I said, I love it, and it made her smile. It's nice to see people smiling back at you that don't feel as loved. Your granddaughter, yeah. um, what... What has she brought to your life during this time? I have it on video, three weeks. And she's laying in the crib, and I'm singing our little song. What is that? One of them is um, the I love you, you know, yeah. you love me. Yeah. We're, we're a wacky family. Yeah, is that what you say? Yeah, wacky. But anyway, I'm, I'm singing mm -hmm. it to her, and mm -hmm. she looks up at me oh, gosh. and smiles. <gasps> and she's three weeks because she's looking through into me in a way that's not about makeup or mm -hmm. success or anything that people assume that you're operating out from. She loves me and she looks right through wow. me and she knows me and I can't BS her. Kids know, <laughs> Kids don't they? Know. They know. Yeah, they know everything. They and do she, know. But she's like the magic fairy dust. What has she done to your life? Why? So I'm laying there. And I'm taking a break, and she keeps talking in the crib, and she just keeps getting louder and louder and louder. And finally, she just cries, and I go, okay. And I turn off the TV, and I go over to her, and she looks up at me and smiles. <laughs> it's almost as if she was saying, nothing is more important than I am. And I just, she reminds me that I'm just not that big of a deal. She's the big deal. Is She's my the big deal. She's the big deal. You like being a grandma, by the way? I love it so much because I can shut down everything. Mm -hmm. I don't have a computer. I don't go online except professionally through somebody because I have a thing about yeah. I'm easily distracted yeah. and I have OCD, all these dynamics. Yeah. And she just lets me shut it all down and I can play. So just Second to chance to play when you're a grandparent. Oh, my God. And the Jed women have done a lot. I mean, you've left such an, an imprint. When people think your mom, how would you want them to remember her? My mother was very kind to the less fortunate mm -hmm. and always made people feel, even in whether it was a limo driver or, you know, the maid in the hallway, she always spoke to everyone. Mm -hmm. She will be remembered for that, the kindness. Um, and the ones that didn't know her, I would say give her a break because they're going to judge her based on what they know about the suicide. Mm -hmm. So I would like for her to be remembered, you mm -hmm. know, for being a great songwriter. And she's my queen, so <laughs> she's still my queen. I don't think your relationship with your mom ever changes and you talk about her in the present tense, by the way. I do? Mm -hmm. Oh. Talk about her. A lot go. of the statements you said were interesting. Were about like she's still here, so you must feel her here. Yes. A lot. Well, you're you're just a, you're like a, a most amazing human being. Oh. Why? I just want to say thank you for spending this uh, time with me today, for sharing your love for your mom, everybody and being just who willing you are. to communicate. Yeah. You tell the truth, baby. That's what you do. If you or anyone you know is struggling right now, if you'd like to talk to somebody who can help, please call or text the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.